Welcome back to this 18th century hair and makeup tutorial. In part one, I covered the hair and now you can see how I did the makeup. So I'm going to start by using this white makeup and on the face. I'm just going to start with the eyes first and sort of small areas with a brush. And this is a water activated cream that has pretty good coverage. So but I'm just going to build up in, you know, light layers really to start with. I'm just going to brush it on and then I'll go over with a sponge. Honestly, so I can really get into those small areas first and then I can work on covering the rest of the face. I'm just going to dab over with a sponge. sort of bouncing the sponge over the skin. And I'm just going to go around the nose. So just starting with the small areas first, because they can be quite awkward. So just remember to sort of bounce the sponge onto the skin and then you'll get a fairly good finish. Okay, so now I've done those kind of more challenging areas, I'm just going to continue that over the face. And for the rest of that, I'm just going to just use the sponge and start by just sort of wiping it on and then just bouncing the product over. And don't forget to take this over your ears. And I'm also going to take this down the neck as well and onto Kate's chest. So just continue this on the rest of the face. Cosmetics were heavily used in the 18th century. It was not something to be ashamed of. Both upper-class men and women would have used a white face paint made from poisonous lead and vinegar. This also helped to conceal any blemishes they might have had, sometimes caused by various diseases, sometimes caused by the makeup itself. Really therapeutic. <laughs> it's nice. I like it. With your facial massage. I think that's why I'm closing my eyes as well, because it's just so... Because you're not near my eye, but I'm like, ooh. This is relaxing. This is, this is relaxing. This is for a massage, yeah. Mmm. And I'm just going to just go down the neck. So I'm just going to go over the eyes with a, a white eyeshadow. So you want something that's got a fair amount of pigment to it. And I would suggest using a matte eyeshadow. You don't have to. It doesn't matter if there's a bit of sparkles there, but I think a matte eyeshadow would be better. I'm doing this just because usually the skin around the eyes can crease and then you might get some crease marks on the makeup. But if you sort of set that whole area with um, a white eyeshadow, and then that sort of stops that creasing happening or sort of being apparent. So just, um, just go over really any of the areas that you think might suffer from a bit of creasing, so I'm just going around the nose as well. So now I'm going to put some rouge on your cheeks, some blusher, to use a very vibrant pink for this. Yes, so just smile for me and I'm just going to concentrate that in a little sort of circular shape on the apple of Kate's cheek and it's really, it's not going to go anywhere else, it's basically just on the apple of the cheek. So I'm building up slowly with colour, I always do this because if you start off with lots of product on the brush and you just go straight for it, sometimes you might find it's too much and you have to take it off and start all over again and uh, I don't know about you, but I don't have the time for that. <laughs> so I just make sure that I've got sort of 
light layers and then I can build up and and see how it's evolving and where it's going and just so I know that I've got the makeup exactly where I want it and with the coverage that I want. And again, because I'm concentrating this just on the apples of the cheek, I'm kind of bouncing my brush um, on that particular area because I'm using a nice fluffy brush as well. So uh, this really concentrates the product in one area. Rouge was applied to the apple of the cheeks for a youthful, attractive glow. However, it was usually made from extremely toxic cinnabar, also known as mercury sulphide. So I'm just going to add in some powder into the eyebrows because they were always usually darkened, particularly with this sort of makeup. Eyebrows were often darkened with lamp black, soot, coal, and even sometimes dark berries. The fashionable shape was rounded and tapered at the ends. Occasionally women wore eyebrow wigs. These have been recorded as being made from mouse fur. A gentleman named Matthew Pryor wrote a few poems in praise of women and love. Here is a poem about women's eyebrows. Helen was just slipped into bed, her eyebrows on the toilette lay. Away the kitten with them fled, as fees belonging to her prey. For this misfortune, careless Jane, assure yourself, was loudly rated, and Madame getting up again, with her own hand, the mousetrap baited. On little things, as sages write, depends our human joy or sorrow. If we don't catch a mouse tonight, alas, no eyebrows for tomorrow. So using a powder means that you get more of a softer look. You can use a pencil if you'd like. I just find that it's a bit more of a harsh line that you get with a with a pencil so I prefer using well for all my clients really um, just using a powder because you get more of a, a softer look it's more natural to my eye and uh, yeah so many different brow products you can use these days but I just prefer using an eyebrow powder but use whatever you feel comfortable using of course Eyelashes were sometimes darkened, but no other cosmetics were worn on the eyelids. Just putting a light layer of mascara on. And I like using a fan brush for this, rather than a disposable mascara wand. And obviously if you're just doing this makeup in your own face, you don't have to worry about this, just use the mascara straight from the tube. So I don't want it to look like there's too much product on there, because of course we are doing a historical look, so it's not like they would have had clumps of mascara on. Lips were painted red with vermilion mixed with vinegar. The top lip was usually smaller and more rounded, where the lower lip was usually fuller, to create a rosebud effect. Again, I'm going to put this on in fairly thin layers so we can build up. Now the round, the shape of the lip was important. They like the fairly rounded, kissable lips. That's what they were going for. So just using a lip brush and I'm just using very thin layers because again you don't really want to sort of put too much product on at once and then think oh yeah I've, I've messed up and then you have to take it off and start again because there's so much um, white makeup on you know it would be you've got to be a bit careful around it because if you make a mistake and you've got to take it off then it's so hard to patch mm. up mm. so um, you know this would just make your life easier Of course, if you put on thin layers of lipstick as well and really work it into the lips, then uh, this means that it stays on for longer because you're effectively using a stain. So this is actually a great tip for anybody who's interested in keeping their lipstick on for longer. Put it on in fairly thin layers with a lip brush 
and then you can blot in between each layer as well and that'll just keep the lipstick on for longer. So I'm just going to really round out Kate's top lip with this lipstick. So I'm not going to paint the entirety of Kate's top lip. So as you can see, I'm just keeping that top lip fairly round. So I'm not going to the very edge of Kate's mouth, the very corners, that is. Lovely, so that's the sort of basic shape. Just going to add a little bit more to Kate's bottom lip. Just there to add a little bit more fullness. Lovely. So now I'm going to draw on a couple of patches and these are little um, sort of like black designs on the, on the face and like a little star or a half moon or a heart, that kind of thing. So again, I'm using my sort of cream to powder paints for this, but you could just use an eyeliner. This is just what I had easily to hand. I'm using a fairly fine brush for this. In 1711, The Spectator noted that women looked like angels and the editors added, they would be more beautiful than the sun were it not for the little black spots that break out in their faces and sometimes rise in very odd figures. I have observed that those little blemishes wear off very soon, but when they disappear in one part of the face, they are very apt to break out in another, insomuch that I have seen a spot on the forehead in the afternoon which was upon the chin in the morning. Okay, so I'm going to put a heart by Kate's eye. Patches were made from fabric, paper or leather applied with mastic and were used to hide blemishes or to highlight their pale skin. They were made in many shapes, including stars, hearts and circles. They were also a language in themselves. They could communicate whether you were married, available, someone's mistress or what political party you supported. Lovely, so I've got Kate into her undergarments and excuse me, modern, <laughs> but um, <laughs> just tucking some tissue in here so I don't get any um, makeup onto her stays and her chemise. It's a good job we're friends, isn't it? <laughs> because I'm going to take this makeup now down onto the chest. Okay. So essentially I'm just going to do the same thing that I did with the face and the white face makeup onto the chest. Okay, so just continue this over the chest. I'm going to use this light blue. And I'm just going to take most of the product off on the back of my hand. And you might be thinking, what is she going to do next? <laughs> I will tell you now that a lot of 18th century women would paint on veins on their chest just to make them look as pale as possible. So I'm just going to very lightly just paint on some veins. And this is why I've taken off most of the product because you don't want harsh blue lines going on, you know. Too 
cold. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> <laughs> being as light as possible. I can mm -hmm. imagine that's a tickle. So ready. So okay. Whoa. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I didn't think I could get paler. <laughs> You're so right, like the attention to detail. <gasps> oh, and, <laughs> and I can go shopping. Got pockets. Has that got pockets? Yeah. Practical. Fashionable. They were thinking yeah. back then, they were. <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh, it's so different. If you are interested in what products I've used in this video, we have included links in the description.